Hey, you guys, Yule here. So I'm back in the garden that I've been working on for a while, and today I will be planting all of the plants that I showed you in the previous video. Uh, I laid out all of the plants already, but I actually had to stop because it started raining really hard, and it's actually going to rain on and off for the next week or so. So I know this is going to be a multiple day project because if it's misting, it's okay, I can keep working. But if it's raining really hard, I just have to stop. But um, let me show you all the little areas that I laid out so far. Before I start, I just wanted to show you these pots that I planted up a couple of weeks ago. Isn't this so pretty? They're doing great. But the first little area that I wanted to show you is this area by the stepping stones. And this is very narrow area and I'm going to treat it kind of like a window box, I guess, and jam pack it with some annuals and perennials. So what I planted here so far are the two clematis and they're filling in nicely. But what actually blew me away is the Stenbergia. Look at this, it like doubled in size. It is going bonkers. Um, but what I added here is some uh, Nicotiana, Gara, just narrow plants that I can tuck into the space, a couple of dahlias, and then I'm going to fertilize and mulch the entire area. I actually found a rose for here. Remember, I had difficulties finding a rose? But I found one, I just have to order it. Now, the other areas that I already laid out is this area around the patio. And I love it, it looks so lush. So the hydrangeas are in, the grasses, the homeowners came out and they actually, I think they were speechless <laughs> for a while and just makes me so happy. So what I'm going to do here, Oh, actually, one more thing. I am going to carve out a few more beds right over here. So that is going to be my shade garden. Um, I already got some plants for that, and I will go over them in uh, one of the following videos. But this is still like a sunny location right here. So all of these plants uh, loves, uh, love sun. And I will extend these beds with a no dig method. And I will go over um, that briefly with you because I've made a number of videos about that. So I will post it in the description down below if you want to know uh, more details. But before I start planting all of these plants, I actually want to show you how I plant plants. And it's um, so funny because it comes so, I don't know, natural to me just plant plants that I never show you the process how do you dig the hole what do you do with the roots so um, let me show you one uh, example so I'm going to show you an example on how to plant a plant with this jam box holly and what I use to plant is this um, shovel right here this is called a floral shovel it is a lot smaller than your regular shovel and I like it for a number of reasons is because it's just easier on my body. I plant a lot of plants, but also I have to be careful where I dig. For example, there is an irrigation line that is running right here. Sometimes there's low voltage lighting. So you have to be careful where you're digging and it's a lot easier to be careful with a smaller shovel like this. Another tool that I use a lot around here is this pickaxe because the soil is really rocky. I just would not be able to plant anything without this tool. And of course, I need my gloves. And the next step is to start digging. So this is actually great, a real life situation here. First of all, I discovered an irrigation line. And if I had a regular size shovel, I could have easily hit that and damaged it. But with a smaller shovel, I could feel it right away. So I stopped. And uh, the inkberry was actually sighted um, right there. 
but now because of the irrigation uh, line I actually have to move it uh, about four inches down here which is not a problem another thing that I discovered is this root of a tree that was here before which is also not a problem because I need to dig this hole wider rather than uh, deeper and that is the misconception that a lot of people have is that you have to dig a deep hole but um, plants mostly grow outward than uh, deep so actually this hole is deep enough now if this was a surface root i would definitely have to remove it um, i would use a saw or something like that so let's now look at the inkberry holly's roots okay so i don't know if you can see that this is rice holes that they put on top here but this is the root system it's not too bad but it is a little root bound so if the plant is not root bound i usually just tease it a little bit and i put it in the hole if a plant is like this i tease the roots a lot oops and what you can even do is root wash this plant and root washing is literally removing all of the soil from the root ball um, i will post a couple of articles on how to do that root washing is very beneficial for plants unfortunately it's also time consuming so if i had all the time in the world i would root wash all the plants uh, but unfortunately it would take me twice as long to plant all of these plants but the idea is to free up the roots so they can go outward instead of circling the root ball over and over again because after being in the spot for quite a while that's what um, roots tend to do they just keep circling and unfortunately when you put uh, the plant in the ground it's going to keep doing that but again our agenda is to have the roots go outward well, this part right here is going to be kind of uh, tricky to film but i'm going to try my best so the next step is to place the plant in the hole uh, and make sure that the root ball level is leveled with the grade. The way I do that, the way I was taught, is to place a shovel on the root ball and if it's flush with the grade, then you're doing it right. Now this is a little bit of a slope here, so it's a little bit off here, but it's perfectly flush right here. Now the next step uh, depends on the quality of your soil. I do not do this at home because my soil is really good. I've been working on it for many, many years, but the soil here is poor. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of plant tone to the native soil and just mix it up a little bit, actually with a shovel. I do not use compost or amendments. I prefer to use compost on the surface of the soil and it will work its way into the soil. So once this bed is planted, I will top dress it with compost and mulch and that will feed the soil. And for now, I use native soil with some plant tone and I fill in the hole. So after this is planted, I would normally water it a lot. Uh, fortunately, I don't have to do that today because it's raining on and off all day. And then after that, I would mulch it with about an inch to two inches of mulch. And that's how you plant a plant. <laughs> and now I have to do it many, many more times.
<laughs> you guys, so this is day three of the operations. Um, I just keep getting rained out. Um, in fact, it's raining right now and I'm waiting for it to stop. And it's been a struggle. I don't even remember how many times I washed my clothes and dried it already. And I only have a few more plants to plant. Uh, so I am very, very close. But what I wanted to show you next is how I make the no-dig, no-till uh, beds. And if you're not familiar with this method, it's basically when you lay down newspaper or cardboard on your lawn areas, and then you put compost on that and then mulch on top of that. And um, you can let that area sit for a while, even maybe over the winter, or you can plant in that area right away. And I discovered this method over 10 years ago. In fact, most of my beds in my own garden I made with no dig, no till method. Um, it's just so much easier and it's also so much better for the soil and the plants. Well, this is the first no dig bed here. This is where I lay down the newspaper, then some cow manure and mulch on top. And then I laid out the plants and I started planting them. You see, I have just a few left. But there is another way that you can make a no-dig bed. And it's this one right here. This is my second bed. So in this one, I actually planted the plants first. And then I laid the newspaper around them, um, some cow manure and mulch on top of that. Now, Whichever way you do it, it actually ends in the same result. It works great, but I find this method a little bit cleaner because you don't have to dig through the mulch as you're planting. But also, you just have to remember when you are planting the plant first in the lawn area, you have to plant it a little bit higher because you're going to add all of those amendments like the cow manure or compost or mulch. So I plant the plants in the lawn area about three inches high and then I um, add all of the amendments. I hope that makes sense you guys let me know if it does. Um, also I just want to make a note that I only have experience smothering our local grass. Um, things like buffalo grass or St. Augustine I don't have a lot of experience with. I know some southern gardeners who use the no-dig uh, no-till method uh, they have a lot tougher grass there and they're still very successful. All right, you guys, so this phase of the planting is done. So let me go over everything with you real quick. I will start here at the wall um, next to the stepping stones. So I added some lime green necrochiana, some dahlias that are not looking too hot because they've been in pots forever, uh, but they will recover, that's okay. There is some gore here, the clematis that I planted in one of the previous videos doing great and um, some salvia and some more gara. And I am waiting on the climbing rose that is supposed to arrive in the mail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop out one of the necrochianas and plant the climbing rose. Now over here, I don't know if you guys remember, I planted a climbing hydrangea that will grow both this way and this way and cover the vinyl fence and this is one of the sunniest parts of the garden and I have the hydrangeas, the tiny tough stuff, little blue stem, echinaceas, bloomstruck hydrangeas, all of these plants I showed you in the previous video so if you want to refer to the exact names you can just watch that video again 
I have some flux. This is blue flame. Beautiful. Um, some nacella and inkberries, more hydrangeas. And I love this yarrow here. I was not entirely sold on it, but now I'm completely sold. It's gorgeous. <laughs> With this little blue stem here, there's a gastiki in here and a ringium that is starting to bloom already and some apple blossom geranium and as per usual my goal is to have half of the plant species be native so i did accomplish it in this planting um, and also all of the evergreen interests because there's got to be something to look at in the winter so we have the yews uh, the ink berries and also the hornbeams have beautiful winter structure and grasses as well um, and lots of colors <laughs> requested by the client and I also forgot to show you the milkweed I have swamp milkweed here that I tucked in the corner look at that it's not beautiful I really hope some monarch butterflies will find this and the next phase of planting is this little shade garden right here um, I have to finish the no dig bed here and also uh, budget did not allow for more plants so i actually am going to divide some of the plants that i have at home and add to this bed because the clients are actually my friends as well so um, i am not sure if this is going to be the next video or the video after that but this is something that i will be working on in the next couple of weeks so yeah look out for that all right, you guys, this is it for today's video. There will be a few more updates on this space as I'm working on a little shade garden. And also as this space starts to fill in, I will definitely update you on that. But thank you so much for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.